Welcome to NTV's weekly talk show, Talking Point. I'm your host, Niaz Ahmed. In our studios today, ladies and gentlemen, we have Rita Payne. She is president of Commonwealth Journalists Association, and she has been with BBC, radio and television both. She has long years of experience in the media. Welcome to the show, Rita. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you, and I'm really honored to come mm. to these studios. And I must say, I'm very impressed with all the facilities you have. These days, TV is expensive. <laughs> yes, it is, and we, we, are, we are just managing somehow, thank God. Uh, that was my line. <laughs> it's an honor and a pleasure. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's nice to have you here. Would you, for the benefit of our listeners and viewers, because I say that some people watch us and or some people listen to us, uh, something about yourself, your long journey into the world of journalism, not necessarily going back to India or somewhere, but uh, how you started, how you got uh, to this position, and then what was your last position, and uh, I see that you are involved in so many things that one could go on talking about for days and months. Well, my feeling is that I'm interested in everything, mm -hmm. and I find it very difficult to say no. So when everyone says, how about this, how about that, I'll say yes, and I'm totally overwhelmed. Uh, so my journey, I guess, into journalism, um, I would say that my father, way back in India, mm -hmm. was a broadcaster and a journalist. Mm -hmm. And what used to be quite amusing, he tells me when I was a child, is he always listened to the BBC. So, and I used to be very curious and keep touching the radio. So he used to keep saying, don't touch. <laughs> so the result was that I thought the radio was called don't touch. So whenever <laughs> I saw the radio, I said, don't touch. But, uh, you know, spooling back. Um, I came here after getting married to my husband in 1971, mm -hmm. and I've been around a long, long time, as you say. And then through doing freelance, etc., jobs, I finally got a job with BBC World Service Radio in the mm -hmm. newsroom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, way back in 1978, 79, when a lot was happening. Yes. Uh, and then after that, I, you know, worked there in radio for about 17 years. Then I went on to television, mm -hmm. and I uh, edited a program called Asia Today, mm -hmm. and then I became Asia editor. Mm -hmm. and, and then I left the BBC in 2008. Um, I just thought I'd better give younger people a chance. And after that, I was invited to join the Commonwealth Journalists Association, mm -hmm. and I chaired the UK branch. And then we had a big conference about a year ago in Malta, Mm -hmm. And I was then elected president mm -hmm. of the Commonwealth Journalists Association. So we worldwide. Have worldwide, uh, across the Commonwealth. So we have about 20 branches. Mm -hmm. We have four vice presidents. Why we do have we have 20 branches when we have so many uh, more, more, more countries? <laughs> We're trying to get more countries. But what happens is I took over when uh, the association had more or less become defunct. Because what I'm discovering, this is an unpaid role, mm -hmm. but it's 24-hour role and it can burn people out. Sure. And I think what's happened is you'll have a peak in an organization and then it sort of dies down and somebody else comes. And this is what I think happened to the CJA because by mm -hmm. the time I took over, it had more or less very few people knew about it. It's had to revive it almost start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're building up yet again and we are being recognized and um, you know, hopefully we have many more branches. Well, uh, you are probably right, you see, because I, I have been here for the last three, four years after I came back from Middle East, and I didn't know about CJA until I ran into oh, Martin Lum, see? And he said that he was the treasurer or something, and he invited me to join, see? <laughs> yes, uh, sometimes organizations do need uh, new blood, and you probably did the trick, and you have brought in new blood, you have infuse and probably recharge the batteries and uh, it's up and uh, working again. I think CJA is, uh, I've, been, I've been visiting the websites and I see there's so much of activity going on and uh, looking at your uh, list of uh, activities that you are going to be involved this month, this, this is only the beginning of June, today is 4th, see, and you have probably six, seven uh, meetings here and there and uh, about uh, India and, and Iran and, and Pakistan and Afghanistan and <laughs> all the flashpoints, <laughs> so to say. 
Uh, this about uh, this year meeting CEOs uh, from India. Yes. 16 CEOs. That's right. I yes, mean, sir. what happened is the, again, all my contacts are really, you know, following up from my days at the BBC. Mm -hmm. So although I've changed hats and now I'm president of the Commonwealth Journalists Association, a lot of people still associate me with the BBC and mm -hmm. I find it difficult to shake that off uh, to the extent that even a lot of my colleagues, my ex-colleagues who tend to call me if there's some sort of crisis and say, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. who should we interview? Or I will let them know if someone's in London who right. might be worth interviewing. Um, so the CEO is that the uh, lady who runs mm -hmm. the Confederation of Indian Industry, she said, look, there are 16 CEOs visiting London, so mm -hmm, could you mm -hmm. um, possibly get some senior BBC or m generally media uh, senior editors to, to come to a lunch meeting? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So because I've known a lot of people, I sort of uh, contacted the heads of the BBC and Al Jazeera and Sky and mm -hmm. various newspapers. Mm -hmm. So I got, you know, about 10, including Robert Peston, the economics mm -hmm. correspondent, Hugh mm -hmm. Pym, and the former foreign editor of the Independent on Sunday. Uh, so they're coming to the lunch and they said, well, could you then chair it and introduce it and so on. So it sort so of builds one, up one its own momentum. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the one on which I'm doing on the 11th. Are, are these CEOs uh, here uh, exploring investment? Or? I think that's what it is. They're, you know, Britain and the Indian CEOs and the Indian industry, as you know, this mm -hmm. partnership is growing. And mm -hmm. um, I was in India for a week in mid-February, and that's when David Cameron was there at the same time. So mm -hmm. I went to a huge mm -hmm. reception uh, given at the UK High Commissioner's residence. And of course, then all his line was, you know, we need business and true, more trade. True, true. So I think this is what's happening, and it's like an exchange. Going well, uh, today, is the diplomacy is more more of economic diplomacy rather than just uh, for political ends, you see, because uh, whatever happens in politics, we, we know about it, but whatever happens in the economic field, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> those underhand dealings, those big business uh, deals that are signed <laughs> somewhere <laughs> in Solomon Islands or Cayman Islands, people don't hear Thank about you. them. <laughs> uh, you will also be involved in uh, this uh, a meeting uh, about uh, Northeast India. That's right. Um, yes, because I'm originally from Assam in mm -hmm. Northeast India, mm -hmm. although I say that, I've not really lived there. I used to be at boarding school when I was about five in mm -hmm. Shillong, then I went to Darjeeling and Delhi and so on. I've lived abroad. But you have good memories of those days. I have good memories of those days. It's beautiful places. Isn't it it was a lovely, lovely place with a lot of potential and my father was the first Indian political officer of what used to be called the Northeast Frontier Agency. Mm -hmm. And that was all the area As opposed Burma. to Northwest Frontier. Exactly, <laughs> that's true, a different image. And so uh, I remember, you know, my childhood memories when I was very, very small, is that I used to be the only Indian child because at that time, tea, oil, all of that was run by the British. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and that was the last when you stages. Say tea, the tea gardens. Yes, tea gardens, um, the oil industry, coal industry, all run by the British. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was very, very young, um, and my father was also very young, and the governor at the time had decided after independence that they should give local people the chance mm -hmm. to be in charge. So we used to have uh, a brigade of the Assam rifles outside the house, and there used to be a cannon there, and they used to be marching up and down, and mm -hmm. the flag used to be up when my father was at home and down when he was away. Mm -hmm. So there was all, all sort of that side the of Union it. Jack. Um, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't after independence. <laughs> so I don't think about the Union Jack and that side. So no, I must. I, I came after independence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and this meeting about uh, this northeast uh, India. Yeah. So uh, basically, the the whole build up to it is that there is a community here which is very active. Right. And they're very, as you know, there's a diaspora everywhere. So there is mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. uh, very committed. Assamese community mm -hmm. and they tend to ask me whenever there's anything to do with Assam, mm -hmm. with food and so on, to chair meetings right. and so on. So uh, there's a journalist coming mm -hmm. from Assam and the journalist feels that the whole portrayal of the Northeast isn't quite right. fair or balanced. So they said, look, could you chair it? And, and they also took people that I might have, I recommended or I knew. And so we're going to have a panel discussion. We thought we broaden it out from just about Assam to look at the Northeast 
area anyway. Mm. Yep. Look at its strategic importance. Look at what it means to India, what it means internationally. Mm -hmm. Because of course, it's a sensitive area, strategic border There have been area. trouble, isn't it? Uh, there the has past. been trouble in, in Assa. I think it's reduced now. But what the locals feel is that, you know, that area is rich in resources, mm -hmm. tea and forestry and anything you could think a of. A bit and of they oil. And a bit of oil. And they feel, why is it one of the poorest in the state? So this is what led to a lot of dissatisfaction. And at the moment, it could be improving more. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's making slow progress. But again, this is where I feel a bit uncomfortable trying, you know, chairing this. It'll be a learning experience for me because I don't go that often. Mm -hmm. But I know that, say, a city like Guwahati is doing quite well. Um, the others need to build up a bit. And I think um, you need a bit of more motivation and help and attention given to the region. We're talking about poor people and people not getting a fair share of, of what is happening and what is uh, their, theirs, uh, the resources, I mean. Uh, you're also, I think, uh, involved with the, the, pro the book called Thistle and Drones, uh, Professor yes, Akbar yes, Ahmed, yes. who, who was Pakistan's High Commissioner here for some yes, time. Yeah. And now he is with, uh, I think, uh, George He's, Washington University. Yes. And he is a professor of Is Islamic studies. Yeah, Ibn Khaldun, chair of yes. Islamic studies, yes. Uh, the same situation, see, see another, uh, Assam is not a flashpoint as such, you see, but Afghanistan is, see, and those uh, northwest frontier province, uh, which is, uh, has a different name now, you see, Pakhtun Kha or mm -hmm. something, uh, these are flashpoints, you see. But, uh, a lot of book has been written, a lot of uh, uh, meetings have been held, uh, and uh, the situation is still the same, you see. Uh, you are involved in news, and sometimes you go and attend seminars, and I probably this month you, are, you will be involved in some sort of uh, discussion on Pakistan, Afghanistan, and drone attacks and all that, you see. Do you see in, in some near future the, the drone attacks will be stopped and uh, there will be peace at last in the region? Well, President Obama already gave a speech when he said that the drone attacks would be scaled down. Um, the problem is that I don't think in this age a lot of people in the States actually realize the impact that it has. Because I did speak to a very senior editor here, mm -hmm. uh, and I did express concern about, I said, are you aware about the alienation was resulting from drone attacks when innocent civilians are killed? Yeah, and they, they call it collateral damage. Exactly. And I think what he said to me, he said, look, he said, terrorist attacks have been reduced. And he more or less implied that you have to sacrifice or you know, you're bound to have some of the casualties for the greater result. Mm -hmm. and, and I found that, you know, quite, um, you know, depressing, really, to see the attitude. And this is why I felt that when Professor Akbar Ahmed told me he was coming to London mm -hmm. um, and he published this book, I thought, well, definitely, we need to get the message out. True. Because people, especially in the West, need to understand it's not pressing a button and something happening remotely. They, they've got to see mm -hmm. that these are lives at stake. Mm -hmm. And what might happen is for the immediate result, you could create long-term, and you are creating long-term alienation. So what I decided to do is to broaden it out, mm -hmm. to get top experts to throw a light on the various aspects so that on any situation, you have so many viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've got Owen Bennett Jones, who's a top expert on Pakistan. Yeah. And I've got various others who are going to be speaking. So it should be quite a lively discussion. Hopefully, uh, there will be discussion. And uh, we hope that uh, some of us will be there to uh, listen to some wise uh, uh, <laughs> suggestions. Uh, Rita, we have to take a break. And uh, we'll be back soon to further uh, this uh, discussion. Uh, viewers? We need to take the break, as I always say, our bread and butter. So don't go away. Be with us. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Apnara Dikchen, 
टॉकिंग पॉइंट शो जुड़ने महबूबेन को अकाउंटेंट्स